Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Especially since I just realized I almost just ended up filming this entire video in slow motion. Glad I went ahead and checked my audio, otherwise I wouldn't have known. Kind of a dark, gloomy day here, but it looks like it's gonna be that way for a while, so, you know, show must go on. And I have this alakaja here, a beautiful alakaja that needs to be divided. And so why divide the plant instead of just transplant it? Well, there are a lot of different reasons. One is that I know people who have asked me for some divisions of this plant, so I wanna be able to give that to them. Two, because I know that this one offsets very freely and very easily, so it, there will just be tons more of them quickly, no problem. I've grown this plant long enough to know its sort of behaviors and characteristics. If this were something like an Amazonica, which I'll talk about more later in this video, but if that were the plant I was working with, I would go ahead and let that plant fill out as much as possible, and then I would more than likely just be transplanting it instead of dividing it because they're a little bit more delicate. They're a type of alakaja that tends to throw a fit very, very easily. So I would wait for that plant to become very large, very mature, very established before actually dividing it up. Whereas with these, they're established. You see lots of roots going on in the pots, but I know that they're not going to throw a fit over being divided up. So if you're wondering if you need to divide an alakaja, things to keep in mind are, well, are you having trouble keeping the plant hydrated? Is there a lot of foliage inside the plant that's maybe dying off like deep inside the plant maybe there's not enough light and enough airflow getting in there that would be a reason to divide it up there's also good reasons to just go ahead and pot it up to a larger size at least for the hydration aspect of it but if there's a lot going on in the middle where it looks like i said not enough light getting into there maybe the growth isn't as even then it might be time to go ahead and divide those up or sometimes there are other reasons sometimes you just need to get airflow into the plant maybe there's a spider mite problem you need better air circulation if things get too dense it's hard to get airflow in there and it can be hard to treat for things like that then that might be a good reason to divide as well or sometimes the middles of the plants will start to die off and you'll have like a big open middle and lots of plants growing around the outer perimeter that can look kind of weird then it would be okay to divide the plant up as long as it's nice sturdy and healthy this is an alakaja odora okinawa silver it's variegated mostly it's newest foliage hasn't been coming out variegated and there are probably a lot of reasons for that. Always a few different kind of telltale signs with our plants that they really need a repotting. One is that I'm having to water this a lot to keep it hydrated, which with an alakaja typically shouldn't be the case. So there's some yellowing leaves in here. A lot of the foliage that's yellowing though is older foliage. So that's sometimes just the natural part of things. Like you can see this leaf right here. See that connects right in here on the stem it's the oldest leaf so it's also just part of the natural shedding of old foliage and whatnot but the main thing that i'm noticing like i said is i just I, she's so thirsty and hasn't been responding much to being fertilized or anything like that so it's time it's actually it's well over time i'm well aware i've been a bad plant dad with this one it's just kind of been doing its thing so well it's been a no fuss plant for me for um, I don't know, like maybe a few years. So it's just like, you know what? You good. I'm gonna leave you here. Just can't do that for longevity. You know, I knew that this was the year it needed to be done. And I did also notice that there is, where'd it go? Oh, it's right in front of the camera. Of hiding behind this leaf here. See this rhizome dipping over the pot? Yeah, that's not an alakaja. That's a hedichium. That's a ginger. I don't remember putting that in there. It is possible that maybe, it, you know, the last couple falls, the frost had been coming very out of nowhere so i've had to kind of rush to bring plants in so it's possible that maybe last year i went ahead and just grabbed a ginger rhizome out of the ground and tossed it in there just to be safe i mean that's kind of what it looks like happened there right so maybe repotting dividing a few things i don't know till i dig in so i'm gonna shut up now and get on in here isn't it a pretty plant the akanawa silver look at all the color on the stems in there it's such a lovely plant it deserves to be taken care of properly right i mean all the plants do but just look at how gorgeous that variegation everything is in there now i expect to probably lose some leaves and things as i'm going about doing this you can see it's already been kind of like Ugh, I'm not thrilled with things. I'm only putting on gloves so I can like access the camera. I can pull them off and don't have to get dirt all over the place or on my lens, I should say. Well, looking at this, there are a few different ways I could go about doing this. I could, which is not a terribly uncommon practice with alakajas, I could go in and just gently separate everything out, lift it and pull it apart. As long as things are nice and moist and the plant's hydrated, Sometimes that's okay. I usually prefer to use something sharp and sterile. I have my pruners 
sitting over here with an alcohol swab. I think I'm going to try and get the majority of this out of the pot and see uh, like how big of a mass I can lift out. Hope that was in focus. I was on the other side of the camera, so I couldn't see my viewfinder because, you know, Sony doesn't like to do things the way all the other camera companies do. Or I guess they do. They just didn't release that camera till after I bought this one. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. That's out of there. Looking fine. I did end up just kind of pulling the ginger root out because I was like, it's a, I have so many Hedichiums that I don't know why I threw that one in there. I'm going to save it because I did have a variety a long time ago that was called like King Ogi. Had really interesting flowers on it and I'm thinking this might be where my King Ogi went. You can see the roots and everything. This isn't looking too bad actually. My main concern is that snails have been really, really bad in my yard this year. So I do want to clean this out as best as I can. I think I'm actually probably going to take this over to an area in my yard with a near a drain where I can hose this out really heavily and try and get as much of the soil as I can, which isn't necessarily something you have to do when repotting an a la kasha. I'm doing that because of the snail issues. Sometimes it helps to get into those roots, clean them out really well, spray them down with peroxide that helps kill the snail eggs and stuff like that. I don't know if I need to go quite that far just because I'm going to be setting this pot right back into the garden where it's, I mean, it's kind of, the, the snails are everywhere. So I went ahead, let the water run through fairly gently and just use my hands to get a lot of that soil out. The whole point being that I just kind of want to be able to see what's going on inside the roots, make sure there's nothing that I need to treat, any rot that needs to be cut out. And then here's the finished result of all of that. So little pieces come off like this, which is fine. They're easy to divide up. That's basically the whole point here, right? You can look at this. I see there's a lot of different pieces in here. So now that everything has been rinsed out and cleaned, it's really easy to go ahead and really they just pull apart. I had my pruners out here and a knife ready just in case things were like really tight together. That was more of a just in case scenario. It's not something that I've typically ever really needed when dividing up a small a la kaja. Yeah, see, they just pull right apart. So I'm sorting out the little ones and kind of keeping the bigger clumps together. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible when doing this. I don't want to shred the roots too much. The more roots that survive, the better the plant's going to do when being repotted and transplanted and everything. And here's the final result of all of that. Isn't that simple? Now here's an example of when having a nice clean sharp knife would be useful. These pieces are still fairly well attached and together and tearing them apart is going to more shred the connection. I want that to be a clean cut, but I don't mind having these still together, so I'm just going to leave them. And that's the same with this piece right here. See, they're still very well together. I could go ahead and cut that out. I don't want to. I think they're fine together. I mean, I think it's fairly obvious to see here that these clump up very, very quickly. They put off lots of little babies. It's really easy to grow a la kasha. Okay, so now I just need to pot everything up. I need to go find some more pots. I hadn't really anticipated having this many little bitty babies to repot. I kind of figured that those wouldn't have like a viable root system on them, but they sure do, don't they? So I need to go ahead and pot those up before they dry out. And I don't have enough little pots. I have these four guys right here. That's just gonna have to work, which is kind of fine given the time of year. I don't want to put them up in anything that's too large. That's not going to be good for them. They need to have access to water. All the water can kind of move away from where the roots are. Using a soil blend that it's kind of hard to see in this, but it has a lot of sand, a lot of, I'm just using orchid bark in here. A little bit of slow release in there, a tiny bit of Espoma Biotone starter. There's perlite and stuff in there too. I ran out of perlite. Ideally there would be more. The main thing is that water needs to move through it quickly. It's the same soil blend I'll be using for all of them. You see, there's not a ton of roots going on here. That's why I don't want to have these in a pot that's too large. They need to be able to get to the water. Pop those in there, put a little bit of soil around the sides. I'm gonna do the rest of them and then I'll water them all in. Okay, so I got everything all potted up. There's kind of a hodgepodge of different pots going on here, but that's fine. They're gonna be somewhat spread around and in different places. I'm not really worried about them matching all that much. My main thing was just that I wanted to get them separated 
pulled apart so they can all kind of do their own thing. Some of them I did still leave together. Any of the ones that I chose to leave together, that was because there just wasn't enough root on one of the plants in the clump to go ahead and pull them apart. It's important to make sure that whatever's being transplanted, divided up, that it has roots on it, right? So this side shoot right here had an okay amount of roots, but this one, the more mature one, not as many, and that's because I think a lot of its roots went with one of the other divisions. You try and do this as carefully as possible. Alakajas, anybody who's grown alakajas, you know, they can be a little bit fussy when their roots are messed with. Whether that's from transplanting them or just how they're being watered, even just taking alakaja sometimes and repotting it, that alone can be enough to make it go, ugh, and they'll sort of throw a fit and kind of drop their leaves down a little bit. And that's why when flushing all the soil and everything out from the roots, I try and do it as slowly as possible and as carefully as possible. So I want to preserve as much of those roots as I can and then make sure that when I'm doing so, that when I'm potting them back up, that there's still a lot to work with. And that's also, of course, why it's important to make sure to, to do this when you can pot them up very quickly. So I get them out, wash those roots out, and then get them potted back up swiftly they don't need to be sitting out for a long time they need to go right back into soil and i did end up going through and adding a little bit more sand into the soil mix and pretty much all of these it was draining nice and fast just the way i want it nice sharp drainage but i was worried that might hold on to moisture for just a smidge too long just because we're going through a spell here in st louis where it is raining like non-stop there's a lot of flooding and uh, I'm trying to put these someplace where they're covered. That's important with the transplants. I'm going to put them someplace where they're not getting full intense direct sun, which most alakajas, they don't really want that anyways. But especially after being transplanted like this, and with the variegation that's on some of them, they'll be going, I'm going to start them off in part shade, move them into part sun from there. Just because you really don't want to shock them. They have a lot of recovering to do. Well, some of them have lost their variegation. I went ahead and kept them anyways, because I still think they're lovely plants with or without the variegation. Typically with these Akanawa Silvers, I haven't noticed them to regrow that variegation. It's somewhat unstable, so pruning is important to maintain that. And out of all the ones I've had, it's just a few of them over here that have lost their variegation. And I mean, there's still some on there. Not very much, but a little bit. And with this one that's lost that variegation, I went ahead and I pulled off the foliage that wasn't variegated basically and see what happens with any new growth that comes out. If it stays green, I'm okay with it. Like I said, they're still pretty plants. With alakajas, how you like your soil is going to be somewhat climate dependent. For me, I like a soil that drains very quickly and will dry relatively fast. And that's because one, a fair amount of precipitation where I live. Also because I know that I am a fairly heavy handed waterer. I prefer to water more often than not. And because of that, I can't use a soil that's going to retain much moisture, which isn't great for an alakaja period, right? Yeah, wouldn't be great with an alakaja. They tend to rot if their soil stays wet for too terribly long. It needs to dry out. Much better odds of keeping an alakaja going if they go a little bit too dry over being too wet. On that note, those are some things I'm going to be looking out for, such as yellowing and wilting leaves. If I notice that the foliage starts to turn yellow, starts to droop and hang forward, things are too wet. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I am going to move these someplace where they're going to be sheltered from all of the rain, but still, something to keep an eye on. Oh, and I did have one little oopsie over here, one mess up, kind of a rookie mistake. <laughs> If you have a variegated plant and you have a little offshoot, kind of like this one right here, no green on it, leave that attached until it has some growth that has more green on it because it's not as likely to survive. And that's because this little guy, there's no chlorophyll in here. It's leaf that does have a little bit of chlorophyll in it and I bent that leaf. So I'm kind of just going to leave it there, <laughs> let it stay attached and hope that it comes back and recovers. If that's not how it works out, that's okay. There's plenty of others to work with here and I have a whole nother one of these plants I need to divide up too so this is just one of two but overall I have found this particular alakaja to be a pretty easy one to grow during the summer I make sure it gets part shade to part sun it does get watered on a fairly regular occasion but it's hot there's good airflow the soil still dries in between waterings at least roughly 50 percent of it dries between waterings indoors I grow an alakaja completely differently. Which is one of the reasons I do like to make sure that there's a lot of sand, lots of wood chips, and um, like lava chips or pumice, something like that, or perlite if that's what it comes to in the soil mix. So it's airy. Air can get in there and it'll dry a little bit more quickly. Because in the winter time, temperatures are not as warm, they're in the house, and there's less airflow because they're in the house, and so things don't dry out as quickly. Even outside, I know it's really humid, but being 95 degrees versus I don't know, 68 to 84. That's my growth space. It's where I try to keep it at. 
I let it drop into the 60s at nighttime, pump it back up into the 80s during the day, and that those cooler temperatures at nighttime, that soil should not be sopping wet. No matter how many fans I buy, it's just still not the same airflow as having them outdoors. And with these being a smaller alakaja, I think the Okinawa Silver can get somewhere like maybe three to four feet, kind of on the max end. It's not a very big one. That means it should be one that's easier to divide over the years as opposed to something like a Borneo Giant, you know, something that just gets gargantuan. That's going to be a little bit more difficult, and that's when you might need sharp tools to keep those sterilized and clean and whatnot in between cuts. Now this one offsets very freely, and those offsets pretty much just pop right apart from each other. No problem at all. Very, very, very simple. So if someone's doing this with an alakaja, like say an alakaja poly, the Amazonica, really popular alakaja, and I, I get questions about this on my alakaja video fairly often from the Amazonica about dividing that plant up. I would still do that fairly similar to what I've done here, but I would make sure the plant is very, very, very mature, very established. I would not be relying on little bitty offshoots like these guys over here in the bottom right corner. I wouldn't be relying on those. No, I want nice, big, healthy divisions. The little guy's not going to do as great just because that Amazonica, once it's established, it's a fairly tough plant but the trick is getting it established you, know, you have to keep them for a few months and they can be a little bit more tricky despite how common they are one of those plants where some people have them they grow effortlessly and other people who are doing everything right they just ugh, drop dead just putting that out there in case somebody is wondering about how to do things with their amazonica and is watching this video i would wait until it's a nice big 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 healthy plant let it fill out let that Amazonica. I mean, really all the alakajas, I tend to like to let them get very full. They have lots and lots of plants to pull out of them. And that's also because you kind of got a factory, you might lose a few. It's just part of it. It just happens sometimes. We do our best to avoid it, but it is just sort of the nature of the beast. And I like with this one back here, I should have left that one attached. I was just moving and doing things so fast, I didn't even think about it. And a lot of these little guys just kind of fell out on their own. I didn't have to do any pulling, nothing. Once that root mass was loosened up, they just fell right apart with their roots and everything. I didn't have a ton of control over it, but I'm just saying, you know, be careful. I may have noticed, like, this might seem like an odd time of year, depending on when you're watching the video. It's August. Yeah, this is probably best done, like, I'd say mid-spring, probably, once the plant's just starting to be like, oh, hey, it's nice and warm. I want to start growing again. That's a good time to divide, or let them go ahead and put on a little bit of growth first, make sure that they're nice, full, and plump. You never want to divide a plant that is dehydrated, ever. All you ever want to do with a dehydrated plant is hydrate it. That's why I have heard early spring best. I usually prefer mid-springs. For me, that's when temperatures are starting to warm up, and that's when they're moving into their active growth, and that's when I would go ahead and divide them, and they have a whole long season to recover. If I didn't have my heated grow space where I'm going to be putting these, I wouldn't be doing this right now, but since they're really not going to go through much of a cold spell, I'm not too worried about it. But if I were just taking them into my home where temperatures stay around 70, 72 during the winter time, no, I wouldn't do this right now. At least not with all these little guys. I would not expect to have much luck with all these little ones at all. The bigger ones, they'll probably be okay. Like I said, these are pretty tough. As far as an alakaja is concerned, that is. And I have top dressed these with just a little bit. I top dressed them and watered them, and I should say, with a little bit of Espoma Biotone starter. Any starter fertilizer is a good idea to use, whether it's a liquid or just something to help enrich the soil and get nice bacterial and fungal growth going on around the roots. This encourages more root growth and it encourages the breakdown of compounds in the soil to turn into nitrogen so that the plants can take that up and use it and grow. And I probably won't be watering them again this year. Otherwise, though, if I were doing this at the appropriate time, I would let that starter fertilizer do its thing for probably at least three to five weeks. And then I'd go ahead and move into a regular fertilizing schedule where I'd do, oh, probably a half strength all-purpose fertilizer every couple of weeks, something like that. Weed fertilizers are great. There's there's a lot of options out there. I just don't like to go very heavy on the nitrogen with the alakajas. That's why I usually split the solution in half so that I don't end up burning the plant. Yeah, that's it. And a quick, you know, I like to talk a lot about these things so that they can be thorough and there can be an understanding to like the reasoning behind like why things are done and to help answer questions <laughs> sometimes that otherwise might end up in the comments. So there it is. Not complicated, pretty simple. Be sure to have updates and things posted as new leaves start to pop out up on my Instagram. That's where I'm the most active. All my social media is linked down below in the description of the video. Also a good place to contact me with questions or anything like that. I keep focusing on this one leaf one because it's like really in a great place to focus, but I just, I kinda, it's not supposed to be rippled like this. That's, <laughs> you don't want a misshapen leaf. 
misshapen. You don't want a leaf that is misshaped like this, but I really, I enjoy the variegation on that one. And on that stem too, how beautiful is that? That's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, there'll be updates on the social media and comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, questions you guys can talk to each other just say hi it's a lot of fun talking to everybody and if you haven't already and you'd like to you can give the video a thumbs up i appreciate it. it makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel so thank you and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell i'll upload multiple times a week and that way you know when new videos come out i'm just pulling the leaves around so everybody can see them and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye